All right, it's recording. And then let me just check my email too to make sure. Oh, she keeps, Jan keeps getting a message saying that um, the webinar will begin soon. Hmm. Let me. Um... There's two people listed as attendees, uh, Mark Andrews and Jane Marquat. Oh yeah, here we are. They just popped up for me. Promote to panelist. All right. She, poor Jan. Oh, Jan. Hey, Hello. <laughs> you, you were, you were outlawed. I know. What was that about? I just had a meeting with you. You didn't like my last participation. I didn't like your comments. <laughs> <laughs> I was complimentary. <laughs> I told you you could multitask and that was pretty good for a guy. What's wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on it. The, um, so it looks like Mark Andrews from Amherst College is an attendee and he'll be uh, presenting for the demolition applications. Jane, I was gonna make, I'm gonna make you a co-host. Okay. Make host, that way you can, um, you know, you can unmute people or mute them however you'd like. I can share a screen too. So, um, you know, for everyone who's listening, the, um, you know, this is by Zoom, uh, the planning, um, the planning, the historical commission, you're all panelists. So uh, that's different than a meeting. So this is considered a webinar. So all the members are panelists. So you can um, unmute and do your video on your own and you can speak how you like. Uh, the public are considered attendees and they, enter um, as muted and they can um, speak by clicking to raise their hand or the, the co-host, um, the co-host, myself and Jane can um, move them to panelists for part of the meeting or we can just allow them to speak as they, as they wish. Um, but this way we're, you know, the town structuring meetings this way so it's not just a free for all. So if we scheduled it as a Zoom meeting, potentially anyone who joins could speak as they wish. Um, but as a webinar, the co-host can control it a little bit more um, and like I said, we can make any members who are attending become a panelist so they can join our conversation. Um, and then, you know, I can be sharing the screen. So, you know, I can pull up the agenda if you'd like or the demolition um, um, applications when it gets to that time. So it looks like Tom Davies and Mark Andrews are both here from um, Amherst College. So I'm gonna allow them to talk and then um, maybe I'll actually just make them to panelists right now. Okay. And then they can participate. And then we have we have some preliminaries to yes to walk through. Right. Okay. And, and there they are. All right. Hi. Good evening. Good evening. Hi. Good evening. Hello. 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 So we'll we'll get started. Um, with a call to order. So uh, we'll begin just with a welcome to the Amherst Historical Commission public hearing and public meeting on April 22nd, 2020 at 6 p.m. based on Governor Baker's executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, MGL chapter 30A, uh, paragraph 20, and signed Thursday, March 12th, 2020. This hearing and meeting is being held virtually using the Zoom platform. My name is Jane Wald, and as chair of the Amherst Historical Commission, I'm calling this meeting to order at 6.06 .06 p.m. This meeting is being recorded and minutes are being taken as normal. So now I'll take a roll call of the commission members. Uh, members, as you hear your name called, unmute yourself, answer affirmatively, and then please place yourselves back on mute. Uh, Patricia Auth. Present. Robin Fordham. Present. Jan Marquardt. Present. Jane Scheffler is absent. Hetty Startup. Present. And Jane Wald, I'm present too. So board members, if uh, technical difficulties arise, we may need to pause temporarily to rectify the problem and then we'll continue the meeting. And if you do have technical issues, please let Nate know. Discussion may be suspended while the technical issues are addressed and the minutes will note if a disconnection has occurred. Please use the raise hand function to ask a question or make a comment. 
I'll see your hand, I'll see your raised hand and call upon you to speak. After speaking, remember to re-mute yourself. Opportunity for public comment will be provided during the general public comment period uh, for the meeting and at other appropriate times throughout the meeting. Please be aware the board will not respond to comments during the general public comment period. For members of the public, uh, if they wish to make a comment during a public comment period, they must join the meeting via the Zoom teleconferencing link. Uh, the link can be found on the meeting agenda uh, located on the town website. Um, another way is through the calendar listing for this meeting from the home page um, and find the link within the event details. Uh, so uh, again, for members of the public, if, if you wish to make a comment by clicking the raise hand button uh, when comment is solicited. And if you've joined the Zoom meeting using a telephone, please indicate you wish to make a comment by pressing star nine on your telephone. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name and address and put yourself back into mute when finished speaking. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes and at the discretion of the Historical Commission Chair. If these guidelines are not complied with or the speaker exceeds their allotted time, their participation will be disconnected from the meeting. Uh, so next, uh, so for the, um, for the public hearing, um, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law uh, and the governor's March 15th, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This public hearing of the town of Amherst Historical Commission is being conducted by uh, remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted but the public can listen to the proceedings by clicking uh, a link on the town's webpage. Written comments are always welcome and can be submitted to the planning, to the uh, historical commission, uh, to the planning, through the planning department email at planning at amherstma.gov. In accordance with the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 40A and Article 13, demolition delay of the Amherst zoning bylaw, this public hearing has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted and mailed to parties at interest. Uh, the, the Amherst Historical Commission is continuing this public hearing from March 18th to provide an opportunity for interested citizens to be heard regarding the following demolition application request. Uh, 211 South Pleasant Street, parcel 14A, dash 193 from Amherst College, request to de demolish a detached one car garage and 197 South Pleasant Street, parcel 14A-195, Amherst College, request to demolish a wood framed barn. Uh, so uh, the public hearing is open and as the first item of business for the public hearing I need to make a public disclosure that I'm that I am a an employee of Amherst College as employee of the Emily Dickinson Museum which is owned by Amherst College and um, I just want to check with Mark and Tom that th these properties are they related to plans for uh, remodeling for uh, CHI in the history department yeah, okay, so further disclosure, I am a member of the advisory board of the Center for Humanistic Inquiry at Amherst College. And so while as chair of the Historical Commission, I'll help to moderate the discussion, um, I will be abstaining from voting on the um, demolition delay request. Okay, so we have, um, we have information about both of these properties uh, and I'll first invite 
um, the applicants to make any comments you would like to about the about the application for a, uh, a demolition permit. And Mark, uh, this is Nate Malloy. The, um, you've been unmuted and I can share a screen if you'd like. So if you want to call up the application or images, just let me know and I can do that. Sure, I might, um, I'd actually invite Tom Davies to speak um, first. I think he had a couple things he wanted to say, but I, I, I can, um, why don't you put up the, the application and I'll, sure. I'll Tom, I can give see. a brief overview. That's why the, um, yeah, I'm having trouble unmuting um, Tom. You should be able to, oh. there we go. Uh -huh. And um, the application, sure, let's do that. We'll do, um, uh, which one would you want to start with? Um, it, it doesn't matter. Perhaps the barn is a little bit more significant. Sure, we can do the, um, here's the, for um, 197 South Pleasant Street. Sure. All right, so can everyone see the application? Jane, can you see yeah. the application? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yep. Great, okay. All right, Mark, I think you're, you're all set to speak if you'd like and just direct me. I, I um, also put the images up for this as well, um, the JPEG you had sent. Okay, perfect. Um, okay. I, I, I'll just say um, the college um, is looking at 197 South Pleasant Street. Um, to turn it into an academic building, um, we're looking at um, probably an addition and renovation project. Um, that that is what we we know. Um, uh, we are extremely early in the design process. Um, so if you're familiar with schematic uh, design development and um, construction documents, we're not even there yet. We're still wrapping up the concept phase. Um, but what uh, what we believe to be true uh, is <clears throat> that the barn. Uh, given the footprint of the building and the program required is likely going to um, uh, inhibit the, the new construction. Um, uh, so we don't have a lot of specifics. Actually, we have almost none. Um, but uh, in, in terms of the size and the mass of the building, we can predict with reasonable certainty that the barn um, is going to become problematic. It's going to become in the way. Um, so that's where this comes from. Um, there's not a tremendous amount to say about it. Uh, that's that's sort of the brief 10,000 foot view. Right. Okay. Uh, Tom, do you have things you'd like to say? Um, well, um, only the, the only additional uh, bit of information is that um, we have taken a, a look at the condition of the structure and uh, it's in uh, very, very poor condition. Um, the, the structural members, uh, that is, are in very poor condition um, yeah, from, from uh, bug damage. Um, I'm not quite sure what kind of bug. Maybe you know, Mark. Um, uh -huh some sort of beetle, I forget the specific kind. Yeah. Uh, so uh, there was some thought to, well, maybe this could be repurposed um, and used within the, the project, uh, but it quickly became apparent that that was uh, not, not going to be feasible. Um, so that's, that's really the extent of it, Jane. Okay, thank you. Um, Nate, do you, is there, um, additional information that you have or comments that you would like to make? The, um, you know, this is considered, <laughs> you know, this house has been inventoried only in so much as it was the uh, president's mother's house, president of Amherst College's uh, mother's house when it was inventoried. There's really not a lot of history on the property. Um, there are some Sanborn maps, you know, the fire insurance maps that show a structure here um, in the 19 teens that was connected with the house. And then, you know, um, in the thirties, it wasn't. And, you know, I've looked at old aerial photographs as much history as I can. And there's really no, um, you know, there's no, um, nothing that can satisfactorily say that this is the same structure that was shown in the earlier maps. You know, um, the footprint and the orientation are similar, but 
Uh, the locations are a little different based even on the sandboard maps. So, you know, uh, we have the um, age of the structure as of 1930 and that, that may, wear, may be accurate. It's hard to say there could have been a structure earlier there, but um, you know, these are, I'm showing, you know, an interior view of the, of the barn. Um, that's, that's really it. There really isn't a lot on this property um, other than its association with the, uh, <laughs> the president's mother in 1988. There really isn't a description at all of this barn um, anywhere. Okay. Um, commission members, do you have um, questions or comments? And I'll, I'll learn about raising hands and... Oh, sure. Should I? <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can stop sharing if you'd like and help, or would you like to... Uh... Well, no, no, that's fine. I, uh, I don't see any raised hands right now. Uh, Jane, looks like Jane, we're not able to raise our hands. That's only for the oh, yeah. outside people. We can mute and unmute. There is no raise. Oh, okay. All so right. I guess, I guess, yeah, I was going to say, I think as panelists, um, it's interesting with the planning board, maybe they did it at a meeting, as a meeting. Um, okay. Panelists, we may, maybe you can just unmute yourself and uh, yeah. see how it goes, yeah. Although, Hetty, Nettie Hetty had her hand up. I did have my hand up. <laughs> hand I up. did have my hand up. I'm looking at the picture that um, is on the screen right now. And I just have a couple of questions about the foundation, this cement block foundation, um, and what is in the corner under the window on the left-hand side. Is that some kind of bulkhead or crawl space or something in the corner there? Uh, there's, there's a fair amount of um, debris. Um, I guess I'd call it debris, uh, old chairs. That looks to be a door. Yeah, it looks, okay. it looks, like, a, it looks like just a, uh, you know, a door that's on the floor. Got it, thank you. But the, um, the concrete foundation that's coming up a couple of feet, as far as we know, that's original to the 1930s. Um, yeah. I, I, I would guess not, actually, um, because of the presence of the concrete floor, but, but we, we don't know for sure. It is in remarkably good shape if it's that old. <laughs> yeah, can I just say, um, since I tend to always take the um, point of view on behalf of historical commission that we don't want to lose barns, that this does look in awfully good shape. Um, I realize it, it has some wood damage, which may be caused by this wood beetle or whatever it is, which is something that obviously could be taken care of. Um, the foundation and the support wall look good. The outside, I mean, you know, it may be a little bit um, rotted at the bottom and need paint, but it, it seems to me it's not in that bad a shape. The question, of course, is how you can reuse it um, within the structure that you're planning. I don't know whether uh, something could be incorporated that just the look of this barn could be kept, but it is a problem. As you know, you've heard me say this before, and you've heard it from other people that were losing barns um, throughout the town. And um, this is on that, that side street that you turn from Pleasant to, to curve over to the field and pick up some of those sides, you know, ways back to Route 9 that people take quite a bit. And so it's pretty visible. Um, I would urge you know, since you are at the pre-pre-planning, to reconsider, again, the possibility of using this structure in some way to keep that look of the barn um, and the landscape that's around it. Um, Robin, you have a question? Yeah, I, I figured out, well, A, I figured out how to raise my hand. Am I unmuted? Yeah, okay. And I can see your hand raised. <laughs> so there is a, there's a raised hand function if you open the participants list uh, in the bottom there, if anybody wants oh. to do it the electronic way. Um, yeah, no, I looked at it. I looked at the uh, building from um, Google Maps today. I just wanted to ask Jan uh, where you could see the barn from because I wasn't able to see it from the straight street view, but it does. It is a beautiful building. Um, well, it's tucked away behind some some trees, but if you turn left coming north, 
on pleasant onto walnut, mm -hmm. then it's on the right. Okay. I saw the one car garage there. I didn't know that you could see this particular building from there. On the other side of the street. Okay. Um, just to clarify, this barn is north of the um, the one um, Jan that you just mentioned and Robin. So there's the one car garage on 211 South Pleasant, and this one is 197. So it's actually north of that. So it's, it's on the other side of Walnut, right? So well, that would be south, right? Yeah, no, it's yeah. actually no, it's the same. It's the same side. It's north. So it's um, I could um. In the application, if you can still see my screen, let me just see if yeah, I can. Yeah, you'll have to rotate it. Yeah. Let me see if I minimize this a little bit. All right. Yeah, the, um, if you can see, uh, this is Walnut Street here. Here's 211, 197, the barn is actually off the screen to the left. So oh, okay. I north, it. north is going, you know, to the left. Okay. Right, right, right. Okay, I misread it. <clears throat> Pat? I just have to say that I, I did a site visit. I didn't walk on the 197 property, but I pulled to the side street and checked out the barn and the garage. And I'm, I'm in Jan's camp in that it just seemed like a, a barn that should be maintained. It, it, it is a classic style. And I don't know what architecture we would call it, but it, it had a prominence behind that house in a way that it was noticeable from the side street. Um, the garage is a whole other story, but, but the barn um, seemed to um, be restorable or removable or, or whatever um, and should, should maybe have a second look with that idea in mind. Are there other other questions? Have you considered moving it? Yes, we um, we we considered two options. One was uh, disassembly and reassembly on a new site, and the other was moving it. Um, they were both um, the structure itself is in such bad shape. Uh, either condition would require significant new material inside, significant new structural material inside. Um, You're talking about the not, structure, the wood. The wood. The roof itself is in pretty okay. bad shape. Um, the The entirety of the roof would have to be replaced. It's not adequate um, for anything. Um, so I, 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 it appears to be a little self-defeating. I mean, by the time we were done doing what we needed to do to it, to either brace it to move it um, or reassemble it, um, in either case, we'd have to, you know, make it make it a structurally sound building. There wouldn't wouldn't be as much left as you'd think. It's so far into the corner of that property, or at least in the corner of what's fenced. Do you own the property on on either side of that corner? Yes, we do. Okay, so you'll be taking the fence down, and this could ex this new building could extend past the fence line. Is that the idea? Um, yes. The the what is likely to happen, and again, as Mark said, it's it's early. But what's likely to happen is that this building will be connected with other uh, college buildings in that area in that block via um, pathways that kind of uh, meander around within the block, right? Because um, the, the sidewalks don't provide any accessible routes between the buildings because there they're, they're steps from the sidewalks, the town sidewalks um, up to any of the buildings. Um, so we are likely to be creating kind of a, a, a bit of a district there that, that uh, has some pathways that allow for uh, accessible um, pathways between buildings. Hmm. Okay. okay, are we ready to, um, are we ready to 
to make a motion on this uh, demolition permit. So yeah, I, I'll just um, I'm just gonna, yeah. So this you know this is one application, and then you know the other um, property next to it's another, and yeah, I mean the commission, um, like Jane said, it, you know we can um, make a motion. Uh, and make a, a determination on on this application the um you know if, if we want more information that can be some of the discussion too um you know i i think that this structure isn't very visible from the street i do agree that it looks um you know it's an older structure and its appearance seems to uh, warrant some further investigation i will say i've driven by a few times and it is really difficult to see this from the street. <laughs> um, maybe when the project comes through, it'll change. But right now, um, you know, it is difficult to have a view of this structure. Um, um, on your timeline, even if we were to grant permission uh, mm -hmm. today, would you be able to do anything within a year? It seems like you're further out than that. <clears throat> uh, the well, with the caveat that who knows now because of, of uh, COVID-19 um, related, you know, chaos. Um, but the, the, the intention is to um, have a design process that moves along swiftly and a, a construction project that begins uh, about six months out. From now. Is that right, Mark? About six months? Um, yeah, maybe a scooch more. I, I, that, that could just be COVID reality bleeding into things. Everything seems to be taking longer than it used to take. So you'd be doing it in winter? Yes. Oh. Absolutely. Okay. Did I see another hand, Hetty? Did you? Yeah. Is it possible that that barn has already been moved? once at least with those i'm sorry to harp on my earlier question but i'm ju i'm just trying to get a feel for the significance of it historically for the property when there was a house there um has it do you think it, it or we, do we just not we just don't know i have no information one way mm -hmm. or the other uh, about that building existing on another side. I just think I just think I agree with Jan that that there's there has to be some sensitivity at Amherst College in the town of Amherst with its rural heritage to to kind of my, both mine that <laughs> own it and also play with it you know so that 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 kind of allows people when they're there in your new building, especially given it being for the Center for Humanities, that it that it kind of speaks to them about what has been there before if we decide to make a decision to go, you know, go forward with one particular set of choices. But I, I'm I'm feeling like you are at too early of a stage to really help us discuss this any more at this point because we don't have that to kind of work into our thinking process. I like the way you talked about owning it and playing with it. <clears throat> you know, have you thought of something like um, among these pathways and connections between buildings, um, maybe just re-roofing it and opening doors on four sides and just having it be one of the things you walk through, for instance, rather than trying to use it as an actual structure, you know, that was solid and, and closed. Um, just a way to still have the look in the landscape without <clears throat> necessarily being incorporated into the really serious construction project. It's not very big, is it? it doesn't look very big. No, it, it is not very big. Um, it, is it appropriate to, to respond at this point, Jane? Um, you, 
you are welcome to respond. However, the the role of the historical commission is less about what future plans are and more about what the what the value uh, the historic significance of the current structure is. So you may confine your response to the significance of the historic structure. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, maybe it's a um, moot then. I was going to speak to our, our focus is actually on preserving the value of the historic house. Um, and, and that's our primary goal. Hmm. You can talk about that. Oh, well, <laughs> that's our primary goal. <laughs> um, you know, we're not showing photos of that, but you probably all know it. Um, and uh, the, the, so the, I guess the, the two things that I would say, and, and it is early, so I, I understand that, that uh, we can't be conclusive about these things, but the, the, the focus is on really preserving that, uh, that building and really making it sing uh, on the site. Um, but we also know that the desired program um, is fairly extensive and that the site will get quite tight um, accommodating the program that the college anticipates for that site. Um, and so that's, that's, you know, the part of the motivation here is that we know that we're going to uh, have a bit of a challenge um, making the, the program work on the site and that uh, the barn is almost certainly going to be kind of um, at odds with that goal. So that, that's, that's all I, I guess I wanted to add to, the, okay. to what we had said previously. Um, Robin? Um, yeah, I was just um, asking, I'm trying to recall what our options as a committee are in terms of taking time to get more information. Yeah, Nate, would you review the options for us? Sure, the, um, you know, the commission can, um, you know, allow um, demolition, right? You can issue a 12 month delay, um, you know, and when issuing a delay, an applicant can always come back and um, request that the delay be lifted if, you know, more information has been presented. So if alternatives, um, you know, I've been examined or other things. The, um, you know, it's, it's hard to say that you can issue a delay or issue a delay and then have conditions on it. But it seems like the applicant is in a point where they would maybe be willing to do that. Um, you know, you could um, agree that a structure could be taken down in a certain amount of time if the applicant returns with more information um, you know, it's, it's not the same as a delay, but it's, um, you know, it's saying that, okay, you know, in three months time return with some more information about the structure or plans for the site, but. But in terms of the procedure of figuring, of determining its significance. Oh, um, sure. Is that, the, that is that, is there a way to ask for a pause while we find out more information to determine its significance? Because the delay doesn't come until after we vote on its significance, correct? Oh, sure, right. So in that aspect, you know, the hearing's been opened and continued already. And in order to do that, we would ask, you know, the hearing, um, we want to continue the hearing then okay. uh, to a date and time certain in order for, you know, staff and the applicant to try to find more information about the history of the property. Um, you know, particularly this structure. So I think, uh, you know, that's in terms of trying and if not trying to take a vote tonight, that's that's the option. It would just be to continue the hearing. Okay. Um, you know, I'm not. I I did I before. You know, this application was submitted a, a while ago, and I was still in the office. And like I said, there really wasn't a lot of information on this structure. I think the um, you know, there's um, um, at the Amherst College archives. There's some great photographs taken from the hillside looking, um, you know, down Route 9 and to the, toward the town center, you know, um, probably um, even in the 30s. And, you know, there's nothing visible, um, you know, from the images showing the structure, you know, the history of the property in terms of its ownership is, is uh, doesn't seem to have any, any significance in terms of who lived there. I'm not trying to downplay the, the character of the barn. I just think that if we 
you know, if we were to continue the hearing, we'd really want to be clear with the applicant what we'd ask them to do. So how, you know, what information would we want to have um, back? You know, would it be more images of the underside of the roof? Um, you know, we brought up the foundation. So is it the more accurate um, estimate of the age, detail of the rot, perhaps? I mean, you know, so I think, you know, um, that's, you know, that's how that could happen. I, I um, you know, we do have certain criteria we have to vote on. Right. Um, is could one of those, I mean, in the age of uh, social distancing, a, a site visit can be problematic. Uh, a site visit uh, um, to look at the condition uh, could be problematic, but the condition is a different thing from the significance. Right. I think we, we um, you know, if Amherst College allows, there can be a site visit. Um, you know, we'd still ask, we could stagger it. Individuals could come, you know, independently, or, you know, we still want to maintain, um, you know, physical separation. And there are masks at Town Hall that I could try to find uh, to be available for um, mem commission members if they needed it, if we were to hold a site visit, a formal site visit. Um, you know, sounds like some already did an informal site visit, but I agree the condition is different than the significance unless that helps determine some of the criteria. I would like to do a site visit. I haven't had a chance, um, but I think it would be useful to go all the way up to it and see it. I don't know if anybody else wants to. Yeah, I would like to. I think it would be worthwhile to be able to go inside. My informal site visit was from the side street and um, I took from a couple of different angles, but it's not the same as going inside. And I didn't do that because I didn't have a formal invitation to do it. Yeah, that's something that only, you know, just this week, you know, it's been discouraged actually to have, uh, <laughs> to have site visits and this week, um, you know, like I said, we were able to get some masks and some guidelines came forward about that. So, um, okay. So, um, is that what commission members would would like to do? And um, is are the circumstances for doing that uh, a continuation of this hearing, or is it? Um, uh, some other kind of motion with a site visit that is um, scheduled in as a condition. Well, are the applicants willing to continue it just a little longer? All right, uh, Tom, are you are you willing to? Are you muted? Not anymore. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, are, would you be willing to um, continue the have the hearing continued so that commission members can look inside the barn? Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously we'll we'll do whatever um, you all decide uh, is necessary. Um, I, you know, I want to. Uh, this is this is uh, kind of gone on a little bit longer. Um, for obviously no one's fault or anything like that. So we're a little bit behind the gun uh, at this point. Um, just uh, in terms of um, visiting the site, we'll have to be um, coordinating that through our uh, EHNS, the Environmental Health and Safety Office. Um, so if that is the next step, uh, you know, we, we'd have to coordinate that with whomever uh, very closely. The college is closed um, so that there, there are um, no one, uh, it's essentially, it's uh, treated as a bubble um, for the few students that are still there. So they're very strict about managing um, any, anyone visiting. So just not that it's not impossible, but just so that you all know that, that we'll have to manage that very closely. Yeah, no, thanks, Tom. Like I said, the, t the town's been closed as well. So we, you know, it does make, um, you know, something, a project like this a little more difficult. I think the, the cleanest thing would be to continue it to a day and time certain, 
and then you know pick it up again. I don't. I think trying to take a vote. Uh, closing the hearing and taking a vote and then having a site visit is problematic. You can always reopen the hearing, but if new information is learned, um, you know, it's just, it, it's another step. Um, so, it, you know, if the commission and the applicant are comfortable, you know, we could, we'd have to determine a date now. And, you know, it doesn't have to be, I will say with Zoom meetings, I know people are working, but it can be, you know, at a different time in the afternoon or evening. And, um, but we'd have to pick a time that everyone is available. Um, if that's the route we're going. And it, it doesn't need a two week notice. It just needs a two, a 48 hour notice as a public, uh, you know, a continuation of a public hearing. So, you know, it doesn't, you know, we can continue it uh, to just a few days out, you know, to two weeks out, a week out, depending on how everyone's schedule works out. But that's just, you know, how a continuation can work. Okay. Um, commission members, I think, I think there it sounds like there is an option to, to try and schedule a site visit, which would need to be, uh, I think, approved, meet the approval of environmental health and safety at Amherst College. Um, so we could, we could plan uh, a continuation of this hearing uh, fairly soon, within a week or so, and try and get that uh, visit scheduled. Um, is that interval, how, how does that interval sound? A week? Okay. Um, I, guess, I guess I'd look to the applicant. I mean, would it, you know, do we want to say two weeks? I don't want to schedule something that may not be feasible in terms of getting a site visit or more information. So I just want to make sure we're, you know, we're cognizant of that. Um, on, on the site visit, um, if we were to schedule that for some time next week, uh, that that's just as as good as in in two weeks. That's that's totally totally manageable. Um, if the question is, are we going to find more information? Um, I, I think that the answer, I mean, just to be blunt, is is no. Um, you know, we can look again and talk with our our archivist again, but you've done that as well, Nate. And um, you know, I, I don't. I I am less optimistic that there'll be any new information about the history of the structure or its age. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it sounds to me that the the real purpose of the continuation is a site visit to look at the condition. Is that is that correct? The condition and the style and the setting, everything. Yeah. All right. Okay. Then um, we can, why don't we block out uh, next week, uh, just the whole week to be able to have that flexibility for a site visit and then have the hearing continued the following week. Okay. I'm not available every single day. Um, we can, we can. Are you talking about for the site visit or the? Or yeah. The, well, either one. Okay. So, so let's let's I'm look at first. What day I have to leave. So. Okay. So what? Um, let's let's look first at the the date for the continuation of the hearing, assuming that will be. Um, two weeks from now. Right. I mean we. So that's, you know, we have, um, Mon you have May 5th or 6th, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, you know, if that works for the commission members, that's, you know, something, I mean, it could be, you know, Monday even, May 4th. The uh, 5th doesn't work for me, but the 4th and the 6th do. Um, Mondays and Wednesdays are the days that I possibly have to go the whole day to New Haven. So I'm better on Tuesday, Thursday, or Friday. Sorry, I don't know for next week yet. It's always the last second. Okay. I can do Thursday and Friday as well. I can do Thursday and Friday. I can't do Tuesday. I can do any day except Thursday night. So it looks like... <laughs> <laughs> we could do a daytime site visit on the 7th. Well, I was, no, I was thinking okay. the site visit would be the site visit would be next week, right? 
in the hearing second. would be continued. Oh, no, next week is, oh, okay, sorry, I'm a week ahead of you. Okay. So we're talking, right now we're talking about the hearing and it looks like Thursday and Friday work for everybody, but I'm not sure about you, Nate. Oh, it doesn't matter for me. Okay. Oh, it works. Okay, can we uh, find a daytime time? Daytime works for me. Yeah. Okay. For the for cool. meeting on the seventh. Meeting on the seventh. Yeah. Yeah. I I I would be um, available after twelve thirty on the seventh. Okay. So two to four, four to six, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Two to, so two to four would be good. Let's say uh, I'm not available at two, but let's say I mean, and I don't think this is a two-hour. This will not be a two-hour meeting. Um, so let's say, if we can say three o'clock, will that work? Yeah. Yep. Okay, 3 p.m. And, seventh. okay, May, so that's, if that's, you know, if the commission, May 7th at three, if that's what the commission would like, you know, we need a motion and, uh, you know, a procedural process. But, so I just wanna make sure that May 7th at 3 p.m. works for um, the applicant and for commission okay. members. Yeah. Um, Tom, Mark, does that is that a possibility? It should be brief. Um, yeah, I, I I can make myself available. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, is there a I mean, move? Yeah, I'll move that the um, this hearing just for two eleven. One ninety seven. I mean one ninety seven. Right. Is that right? South Pleasant, just, just for that one, right? Mm -hmm. The um, continued until May 7th, 2020 at 3 p.m. Uh, held via virtual platform. I second the motion. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Raise, raise your, I mean, raise your hand in the picture. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. Okay. All right, four, and I will continue my, I don't know, do I need to abstain for this? Oh yeah, you were abstaining, so right. I'm okay. abstaining, yeah, okay. Okay, thank you. Um, so how about 2.11? Uh, that we is- We need to schedule the site visit, or are we gonna wait on that? I think let's. I, I think that's going to take a little more coordination. So let's. Why don't we, if you don't mind, let's go through, um, go through the this other property first, and then come back to what what we need to put in place and who we need to check with about the about the site visit. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay if we if we have to do that. You know, just by email with with the applicant. I think that I don't want to try to spend time tonight doing it if we. You know, if they we they don't know the information. Um, mm -hmm. You know, as long as it can be, it can be any time before that next hearing date, right? So I mean, it can be the day before, right? I mean, it doesn't have to be next week, but so now we, we've given ourselves a window of when that could happen. So, I'll, I, I mean, Tom and Mark, I would just look to you. You know, we can email um, tomorrow and this week, and just you know, you I'll let you do some research on your end, and you can get back to me, and we can forward it to the commission. I don't, I don't, we don't necessarily need to spend the time tonight. On it. Nate, I have a I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, Amherst College must have building inventories, and would this particular house be part of a building inventory that would show when the house was acquired and when the barn was acquired? Oh, I mean, that's a, you know, that's on the property card. So you know, it's been. So you've reviewed that. Yeah, and it's so like I've said, there really isn't much on the ownership. You know, there was, um, you know. Like I said, when the, the property was inventoried as part of the Amherst College um, historic inventory, and the property was too. There's just there's mention of the house, but of the barn, there is no mention. Mm -hmm. So anything I found, there's no mention of the barn. You know, really, other than that, there's a barn on the property. There, there's no no description of it or anything. So um, okay, thank you. Just just yeah. just double checking. You yeah, know, I'll look some more. But like I said, I, I, I've looked and there's really, <laughs> I'm surprised, but there really hasn't been any research on the barn. Um, any Tom, documentation. Tom, you have your hand up. 
Um, yes, I, I wanted to clarify, and I, I apologize, I should have said this previously. The college did not own this property until very recently. It's, it's been owned privately um, by various people associated with the college. Uh, most recently, uh, Betsy Cannon Smith, who oversees our, our fundraising group. Um, and she sold it back to the college, or sold it to the college uh, five years ago, Mark, something like that. Um, and so because it's not part of the, co the, the, the campus proper or it's not, you know, it's not like College Hall or, you know, Converse Hall or the library where we have all kinds <laughs> of information, um, the, it, it, it's a, a neighborhood uh, building that was uh, certainly associated, I think, off and on anyway, um, for most of its existence, associated with the college, but wasn't part of the, the campus proper and, and wasn't owned by the college. So I, I should have mentioned that previously. Okay, thank you. So the, the, the assessor's office would have the history of when the barn sh showed up as a taxable outbuilding, right? Well, so I mentioned that the Sanborn map show a structure there earlier, but then the footprint and location change. So there's been some type of outbuilding on the property in that similar location since the 19 teens, but then you know, this structure, I think the assessor's card did say 1930. So, it, you know, using those tax records will show that there's a structure there, but it's hard to say if it's the structure that's currently there. Um, right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So at, um, let's see, this is now 211 mm -hmm. South and Pleasant, a one car garage. And if you can see the screen, I have the property pulled up with the, you know, the garage here within the dotted line of the property. Okay. Can uh, you rotate the view once clockwise? You want me to rotate the view, huh? Oh. oh, come on. <laughs> you're, you're good enough for that. It's a pull down from the top of your um, screen. It's, it's not on the PDF, it's on your screen. How does this, I mean, does this, is this rotated the way you'd like? Yep. Well, yeah. oh, you're quick. <laughs> <laughs> he probably did that while he was doing something else. Probably did. <laughs> <laughs> of course, as much as you were reminding us about the meeting during our previous meeting, I was answering, who was it? Hetty or somebody about how to sign in. So, you know, we're one-on-one -on -one here. Right, right. <laughs> okay, so um, Tom and Mark, uh, what, is there more you would like to tell us beyond the uh, demolition delay, uh, the uh, demolition permit application? Yes, uh, this is also, uh, as you could guess, related to the, the um, project that, that uh, we were referencing earlier. Um, and the, uh, the current um, property at, at 197 South Pleasant has a um, small, very awkward, steep driveway that comes right off of South Pleasant Street. Um, what became very obvious to our uh, landscape architects and planners is that that would not be uh, a viable option for accessing um, a, an academic building or really any building um, of any um, size for handicap accessibility, for you know, servicing the building, you know, trash collecting, whatever, all that kind of stuff. Um, so they set about identifying uh, a way to create a, a viable driveway and uh, the only real option because of topography and other things, uh, it's, it's quite a hilly site, but uh, the only viable option is to actually uh, come off of Walnut Street and the um, grading required and, and the site required essentially would go through this, this little one uh, car garage that's associated with a college owned um, faculty rental uh, property uh, right there on the corner. So um, the, the plan uh, would be to remove that uh, one car garage, um, essentially to enable the access drive 
for the uh, academic building that, that we were talking about earlier. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Nate, is there anything you would like to add to what we yeah. know or don't know? No, I think again, uh, very little research on this. You know, it does appear um, the assessors had it. You know, in the in the um, '60s as well as date of construction, and that's that's really it. There wasn't you know much history on you know the house itself is older, but again, um, not much on the owners. Really, you know, the uh, house was inventoried, but there's really not. There's no mention of the of the of the garage, and you know nothing with the owners really. Okay, members, do you have questions? Um, can I try and redeem myself in Tom's eyes by saying I think it's there's nothing precious about this and you can take it down in my view? <laughs> Jan, I agree. It's totally a non-descriptive structure. I, I was able to see that closer than the barn. And um, we, it, it, to save it, in the, in the light of uh, the plan for the property it makes no sense at all to me. I'm in agreement, rather inconsequential. Okay, well that's, um, I think all parties are heard from in that case. So it sounds to me like we can move to a motion or that someone can make a motion. I, so I move that we approve the application for demolition of the small one car garage at 211 South Pleasant Street. Seconded. Okay, all in favor, wave your hand. Okay, that's four and one abstention. Mom, will you ever speak to me again now? <laughs> He's muted. <laughs> 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 I guess not. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, so thank thank you all. Uh, thanks, Mark and Tom, for coming to tell us about these projects, and uh, and we will uh, I guess be in touch through Nate about um, organizing a a time for a site visit. Thank yeah, that that'll work. So I can just wait to hear from from uh, Tom and Mark and then um, and then you know if you do um, just throw maybe offer a few times and we can see when the commission is available I mean I don't it's up to you but I don't you know I don't mind if we just stagger a time or have a window when app, when commission members can go there individually um, you know someone I could be there just to monitor but you know trying to get the co-commission into the barn at once is probably not advised and something the town wouldn't want want to have happen I'm sure Amherst College wouldn't either so just we can you know We'll work it out, but yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks. Thank okay. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. All right. Now I need to. Let's see. So we'll put the uh, the agenda. That was it. Next thing needed. Oh, is that it right there? The um, oh, minute. Yeah. All right. All right. So okay. it looks like, um, you know, the, there's two attendees. One, I know one is for the Civil War tablets. Um, if the commission wants to move quickly through the um, announcements, if there are any, and then the, their minutes. Um, but Jane, it's up to you yeah. if you want, how you want to structure that. Um, I think if, if we could just very quickly, um, now let's let's go. If there is someone here for the Civil War tablets, let's go there, and then we'll come back to announcements in minutes. Okay. Yeah. So you know, I think I have to. Um, I'm going to move um, Anika to a panelist to allow her to speak, and she's yeah. unmuted. I'm here. Great. Okay. Hello, Anika. Um, Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Are you, I'm well, thank you. Are you here uh, by phone or by video? Video, can you see me? Can't no. see me yet. Oh, if cool. you, um, you can, I think as a panelist now, you can make your video, you can uh, turn your video on. Bottom left of your screen. 
There's a little camera. That's it went on. There you go. Yeah. Okay. You see me, hi there. <laughs> you do. And you're sideways. Yeah. Why is she sideways? <laughs> Perfect. Maybe we can I'm seeing all of you sideways. <laughs> oh, oh no. <laughs> yeah. huh. It happened before and uh I'm not we couldn't we couldn't fix we it on a previous meeting. It. Okay. All right. Well we'll just we'll just uh we'll all just turn sideways for you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but that might mean we're turning Okay, so Anika, welcome to the Historical Commission meeting. Um, just because we are um, absolutely not in the same room, I think by uh, by you know mousing over your screen, you can see the names of people, but we we'll, we can introduce ourselves very quickly. So I'm Jane. Yes. Wald. I'm the chair of the Historical Commission. And um, uh, Pat, why don't, why don't I'm, I'm Pat Auth, a member of the Historical Commission. And Robin? I'm Robin Fordham, a member of the Historical Commission. Hetty? Uh, um, hi, I'm Hetty Anika. I'm a member of the Commission as well. And Jane. Well, nice to meet you all. <laughs> nice to meet you too. And, and Ben. Yep. Hi, Annika. We met briefly. I'm a yes, planner met. with the town of Amherst. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Jane didn't acknowledge me, but I'm here. No, I did. I, ca I called your name twice. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was I was getting rid of Nate's screen so I could see the stuff that, we, that came. Sorry. Okay, I'm here. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Meeting fatigue. All, All right. right. So, uh, thanks, Anika. What, what, how, what would you... Tell us what you uh, have in mind about the Civil War tablet. Sure. Uh, well, uh, thank you quickly for having me. Just a little brief background for anyone whom I haven't met. Um, I became actually reintroduced. Um, you know, my interest actually was regenerated with these plaques through my uh, late grandfather, Dudley Bridges, who I believe was a member of, with you all, the Historical Society. Um, he was a long term, long time. He was a director of building services at uh, UMass, and also through my great grandfather Gilbert Roberts, who uh, musician born in Amherst in eighteen ninety six, where he lived until he was one hundred and seven. Um, I remember them, you know, talking about these stories. Maybe you know, late nineties. Flash forward, I have recently <laughs> relocated back to the area from Brooklyn after a few decades. And um, I really became interested to see, you know, had the plaques been up. I know that um, initiating a fund was something my grandfather had done. Um, and I was really surprised the amount of interest that uh, was generated just through my own field. I work in design. I'm a milliner, aside from working with advancement and development. And uh, through a friend of mine who had worked in production with Ruby Glory, she was able to connect me with some folks who, you know, were really, you know, interested um, in helping out with a memoriam. Um, and just briefly look at, looking at some of the previous plans um, and hearing, you know, just the amount of work um, and costs associated. I've been looking in, you know, some ideas that were, you know, sustainable um, with maintenance, with ongoing maintenance, and, you know, that perhaps could help with just a, another project that could be going on in the area. Um, meeting with Nathaniel and uh, Jennifer Moisten, they did tell me about uh, a few different areas uh, that they were looking at. Um, and so I, you know, really continued on to really move ahead with a project. And then here we have our little world on pause, um, which of course, as I'm sure everyone knows, has for the moment kind of changed the landscape of giving for the moment, if it's not directly related to life-saving services, it's kind of on pause. But I have been in, in uh, contact with um, some of these folks, especially through that worked on production and glory. Um, and there's also a group of two different groups of 54th Regiment um, reenactment historians um, that have reached out. And um, so I've basically had to rethink just a bit just to retweak my proposal to send to you all. Um, and see what you think about it. But um, I do, you know, I have recently uh, received some emails back that is still on people's radars, but
But of course, with a lot of the film uh, companies and production houses being closed for the moment, uh, it's something that would probably, you know, not come up into the radar for at least the next uh, foreseeable months. Um, but I just, you know, I'm happy you know, to be invited and I just wanted to, you know, share that, you know, I'm still very passionate and excited about it. It's just because there is uh, quite a bit of, of gift giving associated with this and fundraising. Those uh, developments have been put on pause for at least the near foreseeable future. Okay, thank you. Did, so you mentioned a, a, a proposal. Are you planning to submit a, a, a specific proposal to the Historical Commission or elsewhere? Yes, absolutely. It was, um, I um, initially was going to, you know, send something along via Nate uh, beforehand, you know, last month before the start, but just due to the current goings on, those uh, just numbers and, you know, just certain facts would have to be tweaked. And so I just wanted to get, you know, just as much information, especially for design suggestion and, you know, the best sustainability. I wanted to be able to gather a little bit more of that and just be able to give something that was a little, just a little more thorough. I mean, of course, there's so much that we don't know going forward, but, um, you know, we still haven't been able to have, you know, just a site visit to see the current condition. And of course, with social distancing, those, those, uh, <laughs> that's a little challenging at this point. Um, but the pictures that I was sent were, you know, quite enough to generate a, a lot of interest. And so hopefully, I would, you know, hear more by mid-May. I would say that would probably be the latest that I would have someone reaching out to me just in terms of what they could commit, um, you know, what they could commit to now. And then I would be able to put together a, you know, a thorough package to send to you all. Okay. Um, uh, in uh, what, what others could commit in terms of services or um... services um, it, you know knowing what I had heard is ballpark of what you know may be available for a, a memoriam um, you know clearly there would have to be additional funding quite a bit of additional funding on top of that and in regards to whichever memoriam the uh, maintenance of continued maintenance of so, um, you know, just in terms of the design projects and what those estimations may be, um, you know, a couple of options, of course, you know, for, you know, what would be uh, deemed appropriate and, um, you know, embraced by the town, if any of them. So everything is spelled out, you know, if this is acceptable, if this is like, this is what, um, th it would be figured out in terms of this is cost, who has committed, um, you know, these type of things like that. Um, uh, commission members, do you have questions, comments? Oh, sorry, I'm just gonna, yeah, butt in quickly. Um, <laughs> thanks, Anika. The, um, yeah, I think, you know, so this was, um, gosh, it's been a few years ago, you know, we, there was CPA money appropriated to clean and restore the tablets and they've been created um, up in Ruxton and North Amherst near um, Puffers. And the idea originally was that that was going to be temporary and then there would be, you know, an installation for these, um, you know, they're really meant to be seen. Um, you know, at first it was thought maybe in town hall, but then it became apparent that it was difficult to get them all into town hall. Uh, then the idea was maybe they would um, go into the new library or if the historical society museum was expanding, they would go there. Um, you know, there's still the possibility of them having space in the library. Uh, but that's, I'm not sure where that, you know, discussion is. Um, so when staff met with Anika, you know, we've also shared that we, you know, at one point we looked at having outside displays outside of town hall. You know, we mentioned Kendrick Park or the Gates lot at the end of Sweetser Park. And so, you know, I think, you know, I'm, I'm not sure anyone is really, you know, a proponent of this project per se right now. So, you know, some of it is with the commission, if there's a proposal that comes in, you know, this can be something that the um, the commission and others can then, you know, we, you know, it'd be, it'd become a process where we'd make a presentation to the town manager and possibly the town council and we'd, you know, we'd keep this moving forward so that it's not, it's not stalled. And, you know, I think fundraising was a big issue. And then one was, you know, where, where's the appropriate location to display these. And so I think for the commission, 
you know, some of it is, you know, what is the location? What is it serving? You know, what is a design? And then fundraising and pieces of that. But I think it's nice to have a project proponent and then, you know, maybe that's something the commission can work with. And then, like I said, you know, make more presentations on this. The, um, you know, we've mentioned it to different people, but with so much happening, you know, there hasn't been a champion of this. Um, you know, we still have outstanding CPA money and the CPA committee asks every once in a while, but it's not as if they're saying, well, we're going to offer to help do the project. They just want to know <laughs> what's happening with the money. So, um, you know, to me, that's what I see. I, I see this as, you know, getting more support, maybe, you know, galvanizing support for this to become a priority again uh, in a way that it hasn't been. And so, you know, I don't have necessarily any answers. You know, I can help do some research and, and things, um, but, you know, that's kind of where we are right now. Yeah, that's why I had um, also from initially been looking really outside of the town as far as funding with people who would have an interest and a more flexible interest as opposed to the town, especially now, I'm sure that there would be, you know, other issues that would take priority as far as gift giving and fundraising would go, um, you know, within the coming months, especially, or even year. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the original plans and proposals that um, I included were just through the spaces that were shared with me, which was, um, I believe it's North Common. Mm -hmm. uh, the other is the, the park that is across the street, excuse me for not knowing the name of it, uh, with a fountain. Mm -hmm. um, that was across the street, and then it was shared that there was there was issues with that fountain. So I was thinking, well, maybe you know, with those fundings, would also maybe repair um, could repair the fountain as well, uh, and then also the I believe it's Kendrick Park. So those were when you see the proposals that I give, it just will have um, those three spaces as examples. But of course, you know, uh, the more the mayor, if there's any other ideas, that that's just the information that I have to be able, that I was able to include in the proposal. Mm -hmm. okay. Nate, is the idea to use them outside, um, assuming that we can put some sort of um, finish on them that will make them impermeable to, to weather? Because just reading the description of the um, restoration on there, it looks like they're not in any shape at the moment to be outside. So yeah, here, here um, you know, with, with some of the CPA money, at one point we had hired um, HAI architects and they you know, at one point was trying to, you know, could they be outside of town hall, you know, in some type of display. So I think what, what happened with town hall is that, um, well, one, it's not fully accessible in some areas and, you know, maybe people won't actually go into town hall to see the tablet. So it's the question became, if they were displayed in town hall, for instance, in the town room, how publicly accessible are they really because who comes into town hall to go into a meeting room and look at the tablets when there could be meetings going on. Um, so the idea of having them outside was one, just to make them more publicly accessible. Um, you know, a lot of war memorials are, um, you know, in a plaza. I think the other issue, Jan, you brought it up was right, that how do these tablets, um, how are they maintained if they're outside? So the thought was that they would be in not necessarily a case, but they'd have to have some protective glazing in front of them. And there'd have to be, you know, a mounting system where, you know, moisture could circulate around them and air. So they don't, you know, they're not susceptible to, to, you know, extremes in temperature and humidity. So none of that was necessarily worked out. It was just, those were the questions and issues that were, um, you know, that were brought up. And so, you know, here's, if you can see the screen, here's one schematic that, you know, was thought of, one was, you know, having, you know, another type of, um, you know, um, display. They're also meant to be seen in a series too. So, you know, they were originally, you know, um, in a stairwell, but they were meant to be seen sequentially or all together. And so, you know, we were also trying to find a space big enough that they could all be viewed um, relatively easily or together. So, you know, some people have said, well, can, can we um, have two areas where they're viewed, but then, you know, separating them physically might, you know, have other problems and may not have a full impact of seeing them together. So, um, you know, it's another design consideration, but, you know, here's, you know, like, you know, these are just some quick, you know, some schematics that were developed. And, mm -hmm. you know, my thought is, you know, we're still working on the North Common, um, 
Yeah, I'd right. rather see them as some of the knee walls in the North Common kind of incorporated into the space rather than this awkward um, you know, sticking out of the side of the building like that as a little gallery. I was just wondering if we know for a fact that there is some material that can seal them. Um, we never, the architect said probably, just we never really went that far, to be honest. Um, if I could, I had one, uh, one architect uh, proposed, uh, well, actually all of the proposals included, they are encased, um, but it's, it's a matter of the type of um, encasing. So it's um, weather resistant, would, you know, it would stand and withhold like the, the New England winter. Um, but basically everything there is protected. Um, and then one has an actual like top enclosure so you can walk through. Um, I did send pictures of the areas just you know for the designers looking at it to be able to complement the background and kind of have it work in something so um you'll see what they're sending there's one is one almost resembles like when you're uh, like a museum in kosher so it has the look of standing outside but it's protected mm -hmm. from the elements um, and they also these designs do not have the draining um they do not have the same draining issues that I believe some of the other designs did and that cost the elevated just slightly. Mm -hmm. So they um, would stay protected from the ground bottom up. I wonder if they could you know, be incorporated into the design of the bandstand whenever that happens. Mm -hmm. Or whatever that design is. I don't know what the design is. Right now. Yeah. It's in the midst of being changed radically. So perhaps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just see it working on the North Common better because they're so big. There's so much linear space that'll be taken up, right? And, and right. they're tall too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the dimensions of them are, you know, laid out right here. So, you know, about five feet by six feet. Um, yep. Okay. Uh, yeah, Jan, I agree. I like the I like the idea of trying to um, integrate them into the North Common. Um, you know, I think if we ever changed the Boltwood um, Ave and then, you know, made a better plaza in front of Town Hall, you know, could they be incorporated there into this whole design? You know, again, I'm not, you know, it's something that I think the commission could, you know, if, if once, you know, we, you know, we could wait till June, but, you know, keep this moving and keep it as part of the conversation. So it's not just, you know, it's not lost when, um, if the North Common gets picked up again. Well, my understanding was that the North Common will be picked up again next year for the following year, right? Yeah, it was, um, you know, the town manager had done his, um, his four, you know, mentioned four projects to kind of revitalize downtown or increase the public space of downtown. And the North Common was one of them, along with some Kendrick Park you know, work and maybe a possibly a, a public private partnership in a parking garage yeah. uh, and accessibility, accessibility improvement. So this was one of the projects, you know, that, you know, the whole common, you know, the bandstand in the North Common was one that he wanted to have, right, see happen in the near future. So it's yeah, probably been pushed back a little bit, but. Too. Yeah. Okay. Well, because that project is being supported by the town manager, uh, and may may well proceed. Um, that seems both the most practical and probably the most uh, significant uh, possibility for placement right now. Yeah, we only have half the money we need for the design that's currently working, but it it'll be modified because of that. And so, incorporating these you know, could be put into that modification pretty easily. We're gonna to have to kind of start over mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what shall we, how shall we proceed from here? Should we just continue to keep this on our, uh, uh, as a sort of an ongoing agenda item so that it, it's all, you know, that we can sort of track it and then uh, take advantage of timing opportunities as, as they come up. It sounds really interesting. I think we should just keep plugging away at it and mm -hmm. uh, 
making sure it's on our radar um, as well as other people's. Yeah. What so, was the um, goal of having it on the agenda today? What were we What were we expected to do? I think you know just to reintroduce it. So you know, um, you know, have Anika talk about it. I think because of the COVID crisis, it did um, you know tweak the schedule a bit. But I think you know hearing her speak, I think, you know, we could have this as something that on the June agenda could be a topic. Um, it could be in July when this would be, you know, she could uh, discuss it more if she has a proposal. Um, the town manager has said he doesn't want to have site visits until late June on town property. Um, so it could also be that maybe in June we could have, um, you know, have people go to Ruxton and see the tablets. You know, we could actually, um, do that then in late June, early July. So, you know, tonight really is just, you know, is that get, you know, so there are new commission members. My thought is just to get this again, right back on the radar, have the commission members thinking about it. And then when it returns on the agenda, you know, I can send you some more, you know, I can send you some of this information, but just to have, be thinking about it, you know, in terms of where is a good place to display these, what are possible issues or challenges, what are opportunities and then it just you know becomes something that we can further the conversation. It would make sense to me to put it on the agenda when Anika is ready to come back with a proposal, mm -hmm. and 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 it, it would seem that that would probably coincide with the June or July that you're talking about, perhaps, and then a site visit so that we could be more familiar with the with the tablets, mm -hmm. um, and then go from there. I think that makes good sense and that way you all would be able to, you know, have your opinions on <laughs> what design structure proposals you like, if any, and, you know, be able to visualize them. Okay. That sounds great. We Can I just mention one thing to keep in mind? Because I think I'll be off the commission by then and I don't know about you, Jane, but um, note that the, they vary in thickness. It says from approximately one and a half to two inches. Mm -hmm. These are marble. Marble has the lowest tensile strength of almost any material, which means it can't hold its own weight. That's very thin. So they're going to have to be set within some other structure, no matter what, unless they're hung on an interior wall or something. And even then, they could just break from their own sheer weight you know, fragile. on themselves. So keep that kind of in mind when you're thinking about display that no matter what you do, they're going to have to be reinforced with some sort of frame. Yeah, yeah. the, cons the consultants, um, you know, uh, Irving Slavitt, who you know, is from Monument and Conservation Collaborative, he had, he had said that. I mean, he recommended that if they were displayed to have a backing on them, uh, the, the, entire, the entirety of the, of the tablet, some of them have cracks, mm -hmm. um, but it, you know, um, through them, um, you know, we they're in Ruxton now uh, at one point we actually had um we talked with Irving you know this is a few years ago about trying to get them into town hall and even having one some be displayed and you know they recommended having a professional rigger move them because they're so fragile and it it, it is a big project um because of that you know um but I think yeah I think waiting till late June or July I can try to we can to see about a site visit for the commission members and others and then this can be, you know, on the agenda for June or July. And, you know, we can just start, you know, having, you know, bring this up again. And Jan, um, yeah, you probably, that's right. So commission members, there are a few that um, terms expire June 30th. Typically, if you've been on for two terms, you are, um, you won't be reappointed. Um, but Jan, you know, we can make an exception if you want. <laughs> <laughs> You're always welcome to come back to a meeting. I'll just keep you. I'll keep you on the email list, sir, so you always get the emails anyway. <laughs> Nate, I would miss you so much if I finally went off this commission. You've got a deal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Anika, thank you very much for, uh, for coming to talk with us about this, this project. Uh, well, thank you for having me. It was nice to meet you all virtually, who I haven't met. Likewise. Well <laughs> yeah. And um, uh, Nate, I'll be in touch soon just to coordinate when I'll, you know, send you some uh, more information. Right. Yeah. No, thanks so much. Thanks. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Okay. So let's see, we should go back to
announcements? Are there announcements, Nate, or anyone else? No, I think that's a good segue, though. The, um, I'll reach out to um, the commission members whose terms are expiring. It's the town manager is aware of it. There's a number of, um, you know, on members on boards and committees where members are expiring. So I'm not sure what the idea is, you know, uh, at this time in terms of membership. But that's something I'll just reach out to everyone and, you know, um, see if I can get an update there. Okay. Yeah, we are. Um... Let's see, I think we are at a, we're one short of maximum, but that actually means that we're at a minimum, I think. So right. We're, you know, <laughs> we're a, <laughs> a, a funny number. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. Uh, minutes from the January meeting. And they're here too, if anyone has any. Yeah. Yeah, I saw a couple <laughs> of things. Um, can I ask a couple questions? I wasn't at the meeting, but I'm just looking at the actual text of the minutes. Um, mm -hmm. Under two, I assume that first I is supposed to be A, because otherwise it goes straight to B. Yeah, that looks like that should be, okay. And then um, down in the Sarah McKee, text. Uh, I think there's a typo on the fifth line down. It says there are aspects of the building that involve charging. I think it's changing parts of the outer structure and it would be there are aspects of the plan. You move so fast. Where are we now? Um, B. Do you say the second page or the first page still? So. Third page. It's the third page. Third page. Oh, my goodness. 7D. It's the only two things I marked. I wasn't reading that fast. Okay, no, 7D. Okay. See where it's uh, fifth line down should be there are aspects of the plan that involve changing parts of the outer structure. I mean, I'm assuming that's what she said. Mm -hmm. Instead of charging and the verb is gone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it's changing. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And add in the word R. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That's all I saw, but I wasn't there, so I don't know what y'all really said. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, 7B, um, Molly Turner's comment. Uh, Putnam, I believe that is the name of the architect. I think it's Roswell Putnam. It is right, yes. Yeah. So let me do that B. Uh -huh. And um, maybe instead of historic architect, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, local 19th century architect or local 19th century architect. Yeah, I think local 19th century. <laughs> So what's the architect's name? Is it Roswell Putnam? Yes. Okay. Because I'm intrigued now. I want to go find out more. Yeah, there's um, um, a few buildings around town. There were, uh, I think, three on North Prospect Street that were attributed to him. Um, it was one actually right behind the Historical Society that was moved uh, to make way for the CVS parking lot. But uh, there's a few uh, in town. And then I think in Leverett as well. Thanks. All right. So with those uh, corrections, is there a motion to approve the minutes with corrections? I move to approve the minutes as amended. Thank you. Second. Thank you, Pat. And all in favor, raise I, hands. Should I abstain since I wasn't there? Yes. Probably, yeah. And okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, and one abstention. Okay. Uh, comments for uh, comments to the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission for outbuildings and any yeah. of our district nominations. I think I'll just um, one is um, 
the East Village expansion, um, I guess you know they've submitted it to Mass Historic and they're wondering if there's any local comment. So I can email this out again. It was emailed uh, quite a bit, um, quite a while ago. And, um, you know, uh, Shannon Walsh came and discussed from PVPC discussed the this, I think, um, I don't know if it was at the November meeting. Uh, I was going to try to find the map. Uh, so I don't, you know, I don't necessarily have any, any comments. Um, uh, there's a lot, a lot of paper here, 37 pages, but, you know, I think if the commission member members had any, the, the boundaries were extending quite a bit, a bit north and east and, uh, So I think probably that the, the the historical commission, the local historical commission, should uh, make some comment, even if it's just more like an endorsement. Than a sure. Yeah. You know what? That's too bad. I don't see a map here. Sorry to click through so fast. I don't see a map um, quickly for this. So yeah, you know, there's a number of properties that are being included. So. You know, we can we can uh, we can talk about it tonight, or we can uh, wait for the next meeting. What What do you need from us? Just an approval or appreciation or something? It, yeah, it could be that the you know the commission um, you know acknowledges the 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 um, the expansion, or you know if you had comments on specific properties. And I don't you know I don't think that I do at this time. You know the. Um, can we, let's see, I'm, I'm thinking maybe I could, maybe I could draft a short letter of some kind that, um, after I look at it again, sure. um, and it can be, you know, hey, partly acknowledged. The and send the letter with the document and we can, you know, read the document and then tell you if we think the letter's fine or if we want to add anything. Sure, I'll, I can email all this again, um, and we can see if there's any in the uh, comments. She does good work, so I'm expecting it to be good reading. I mean, yeah, no, I think you know we this uh, this project started a while ago, so I've already been over the boundaries. So we try to include you know, for instance, um, going east to, toward Pelham. You know, at some point there was a decision whether it was, you know, political or, you know, money wise, why they didn't capture some homes that were also contemporary to when the district was, you know, other homes when the district was nominated. So, you know, for instance, we try to capture homes north and east that were left out that were also of the same time period and, you know, significant to the district and mm -hmm. also south and west. So I feel like we've, we've you know, we've, through her work, we've captured what what is a, a pretty good um, boundary for the East Village. Um, Nate, did I see uh, in the list of properties that some were were bolded in the table? Are the are those added properties? Yeah, let me get to that. Um, it might just be my screen, but it, it looks like some are bold and some are not bold. Maybe. Right. No, I think um, I think some of these right were added. So the ones in bold were added. Were added. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's a fair number. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Nate, I remember going through this when it was originally sent, and I personally didn't have any comment, but I'm happy to go through it again. And Great. All right. So, so uh, yeah, Jane, do you would you want to draft a letter, and I can send this out tonight or tomorrow, and we can just you know, um, you and I can look at the letter sometime next week and or whenever, and we can send it off to Shannon. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Jane. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, um, then updates. The barn at 562 Montague Road, um, we don't, we still don't have a, a report or findings of from the timber frame guy, do we? What is it about barn people that come and promise reports and never give them? Is it something endemic to the field? 
They don't like computers. <laughs> they can write it by hand. I All know. of our commitments. Yeah, I, yeah, I, um, yeah, I try to make it, you know, after the meeting, um, you know, we discuss it, you know, I said it can be really informal, right? So if I, I think sometimes when we say report or something, maybe it scares, uh, scares people to think that they have to present something that's very formal, but I try to say that it can just be, you know, as simple as, right, um, a quote or bullet points, you know, it can be a hand-drawn uh, plan if you need. So I, yeah, I can, um, yeah, I don't know, we need, we should have some follow-up there. Has anybody contacted him since your last meeting when it shows it wasn't in yet? No. Okay, maybe it's time. Mm -hmm. I walk past that barn when I go out for a walk and, um, you know, there was a, a little addition on the, on the west side oh, yeah. that looked like it wasn't in very good That's the worst shape. Right? Yeah. And it has, it's now pretty much collapsed. Mm. Oh yeah. yeah, we're still not sure what that little addition was, right? There are some right. ideas. Right. Yeah. It, it was quite small, uh, but but now it's you know, and it was in rough shape when we uh, when we looked at it. It was probably the worst. Uh, yeah, the most, uh, most hole in the roof, didn't it? Yeah. 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 It was quite so, rotten. It looked like it was either where there was you know compost or manure was stored, and then maybe. Lit Later had been converted to some of a chicken coop, but um, oh, be. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. When does the delay end on this barn? Fall? It, yeah, in the fall, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think it was aug. Uh, uh, was it August that it was issued? Late August. Mm, right around there. Yeah. So, uh, and then we did a site visit when it had started to turn cold. I remember that. Right. Mm -hmm. The first one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, that seems like a long time ago. And then we went back, Jan, you and I went back with the barn expert, with right. Nate. Mm -hmm. yep. And then it was The cold. second barn expert. Yes. Yeah, we've been there three times. Yeah. yeah. So, Nate, you're going to follow up with the fellow who was there last? Yeah, I can follow up. You know, That's the owner... Correct. The, uh, the owner, too, at the end of um, the meeting said he would be interested in possibly reusing some of the timbers too, um, which was interesting. He said that he might want to use them and reconstruct a smaller barn or shed on the property in the same location. So it may be that, um, you know, that, that that becomes the best uh, route. You know, I'm not sure anyone is gonna come and salvage it, but uh, I'll follow up with Jesse and see what, um, if, if he can get us anything. Find out how hard it would be to salvage some of that. I have a contractor who's looking for old beams like that. Mm -hmm. um, and so if, if it's easy enough when they're taking it apart to save those, I, I know he'd love to come just take them off their hands. Right. No, no, yeah, that's, I'll ask that. I think the, um, it's funny, you know, some contractors probably just want to go in there with a wrecking ball, but you could actually, you know, cut it in pieces and probably, I mean, probably do it in a way that it's not that hard, but I, that's something we can ask. Yeah, that wasn't the kind of demolition he had, though, bid. Right. We're going to yeah. do it in like four hours. <laughs> Get a knocking ball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. The uh, garage at 462 Main Street. The, um, you know, the owner had advertised and, you know, there was some follow up, but nothing, there wasn't any taker. So, the, you know, the um, project is still, I guess, moving forward in terms of the, um, you know, he's cleared the trees around there. So the barn, you know, the garage carriage house barn can come down, you know, there wasn't any, anyone who was willing to come take it, so. And our last vote on that was that we would lift the delay if he could, it, unless he found somebody, what was, we had a special, Hetty, you came up with that. He had to advertise again. Right. And if long as he advertised after a certain point in time, we would lift the delay. Wasn't that the deal? It was right. So as of, you know, March or April, maybe it was through March. Uh, if he kept the advertisement open, mm -hmm. uh, then the delay would be lifted. And so, you know, he did, we were, we corresponded in March and he did show me some, you know, his, uh, the listing and Craigslist online 
and he posted it again in the Gazette. And there were some email correspondence with interested individuals, but nothing uh, worked out. You know, it, it came back to, um, you know, a few people thought, well, maybe I could reuse it, but then they had a, you know, I think he said this, um, someone else had, you know, a contractor look at it and they said, well, the cost to who wanted to reuse it, it would be greater to try to reuse it than just to build new on the, on their own site. So no one was willing to do that. Okay, so do we uh, feel that the conditions that we placed on that do, uh, delay have been fulfilled? I think so. I, I can't see any real place we can go from here. Right. Yeah. We gave it our best shot. We did. It's really a shame because now the trees are down, the property's already probably looking pretty bleak. Um, um, let's see. So we yeah, I mean, if there's there's really there's not necessarily any action by the commission. If we, you know, if we felt that it wasn't, um, if I thought that it wasn't satisfied, you know, then the delay couldn't be wouldn't be allowed. I mean, the demolition wouldn't be allowed. So, if, you know, I I thought that, you know, through email and what he had sent, um, you know, it seemed like as if he had satisfied what the commission requested. And we already voted, so we don't need right. to now, right? So that's right. an administrative. Uh, that's in the administrative arena now. It's not. We don't. We don't take any more action. No. Right. No more action. Right. Just. Just. Just to let you know, um, you know that there wasn't anything. Okay. Then uh, demolition delay bylaw. Um. So bit of a standstill there. Um. I did email Jane to get reconnected with her. We talked about having a workshop. Now we have social distancing. So. Um, I will uh, make an effort to connect with Jane over the next uh, week or two and pull together what we've got and reconvene at the next meeting and let you know where we stand. Are you, getting, are you moving through it somewhat or are we still at the very beginning? Well, we had kind of paused with the hope of um, sponsoring a demo delay workshop with the Mass Historical Commission. Right. Um, and then not having gotten that on the calendar and now with the um, COVID situation, that doesn't look like, we were hoping that that would help. We were kind of pausing to have that experience help direct us. So uh, we have to take a new approach or return to the old approach, I guess. I just personally, I think the longer we delay not, not updating our bylaw, the more stuff we're gonna run into that's dicey and right. we really should clean it up as soon as we yep. can. Even if it's not perfect, it's better than what we've got. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I mean, I did like the idea of having, you know, Mass Historic was, uh, I don't know, if, I mean, I guess maybe excited to have to have a hold a workshop out here um, or be a part of something. You know, I haven't kept up to date, but I know, you know, some communities have really, um, updated their bylaws in the last few years. So there's new thinking on how to, you know, how to manage a, a demolition bylaw. Um, is you know, ours is, ours is a 30 year old template really, right? A 20 year old template now. Yeah. So can you give uh, Jane and I any direction on, on? Yeah, let me, I had looked um, before all this started. I, I had looked again, and um, I talked to Rob Moore, the building commissioner, and so he he actually has a draft. He thought he said he had thought he'd send it to um, uh, you know Ted Parker at the time, but let me follow up with Rob. He he had tried to come up with a pretty clean version, um, you know, a kind of a different approach. So let me, if he's willing to share that. Okay. So I I'll contact. Chris Skelly again and see if he would want to do a remote workshop. Yeah. Okay. Or if yeah. he could uh, wait, wait this out and then do a workshop, but maybe he'd be interested in a remote workshop. Okay. Sure, yeah, I can, if he, I mean, I'm sure he can, um, but if not, I can always try to, you know, through the town, we could host something too, if he's willing. Yeah. You know, we could yeah. set something up. Yeah. Okay, yeah, great.
Okay. Um, let's see, writer's walk. Jan's going to uh, really hurt me. I'm on the edge of my seat here. Yeah, you know, we, the town put this out to bid and um, I thought ArtFX was under contract. And then, um, so, you know, I've emailed Anthony, but there really hasn't been a lot, um, a lot um, moving forward on that right now. So um, let me follow up with Anthony, but, you know, like I said, I thought it was already under contract. It's just a matter of fabricating and getting them installed. And, um, you know, I'm not sure where that is, so. Yeah, he did send them. I mean, he did do the bid and, and it, it didn't get past that point. We were stalled because he hadn't sent anything out, right? But then that, he did send out. Yes. And yeah. they responded. Yeah, I'd seen something and you know, I've emailed Anthony a number of times on this and um, it's, you know, for whatever reason, that seems to be the, um, a, you know, a bit of a roadblock. And um, you know, I, I thought there was a contract for it and um, I haven't heard much. So let me just do that. You know, the idea was still to have it done this, uh, this spring, which is still the possibility. So we had been working to get this done, installed this spring and summer. And so that's, that's still the goal. Do we have the text corrected for the website yet? We can't fabricate it until we have that text. Uh, it was just the web address, right? Right, we were gonna make it a better address for the tone. Yeah, the, so for the commission, you know, the UMass hosts the Writer's Walk. It's a, um, it's not a town owned or a town, a town website. And so there was concern that if it, you know, the domain ever changed, uh, then, you know, the, the web link would be to the wrong site. So I, I talked to IT, we had two different ideas about that. Um, one is we, we had a web address that would just be like a redirect. So it wouldn't actually, you know, just, it would link to whatever the, that needed to be. And so um, the other one was then to try to actually put it on the town website, which isn't really what we wanted to do. So I think, you know, we were going to go with the web redirect, the hyperlink reader, redirect. And let me follow up with that. But I thought that was fine. I thought that was okay. You know, it was never finalized, but um, as long as the address to redirect is an address that if that ever went away, we could use to fill it with our own with right. The material, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. We, we do have to have that before we can send out the approved text um, signs. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, we, I had spoken with someone in IT and we had come up with what was a solution at the time, so let me. Right. And is there, if, if Anthony doesn't respond, is it possible to go on the other end and ask ArtFX whether they got stuff and are ready to go? Yeah, I can ask someone else in accounting just where that is too. I, okay. I can, I'll send an email out tomorrow or tonight about that. Do you want me to bug you in a couple days? Sure. Okay. And then I can forward your email. Uh, okay, I'll no, write I mean, one that can be sent <laughs> to somebody else. Be polite in your bugging. <laughs> <laughs> what? You think I might not be? <laughs> oh no, it'll be it'll be fine. I, <laughs> okay. All right. Um, West Cemetery signs. Um, yeah. Oh, you know I so. I'm sorry I have a, a fault here, which is that I'd said that I would um, reduce the oh, right there. reduce the identifications to you know a few words and mm -hmm. I did that, but I didn't send it to you. Um, so I'll make sure that that gets to you for our, for our next meeting. Yeah, I'll reach out to Kyle. I know that they've you know um, one of their projects is completely stopped right now and um, I know they've slowed down a bit. So um, if this maybe maybe this could maybe this could become then something they work on. <laughs> In the meantime, oh. I was going to say you know I don't know where they are though with their work. I know they have really slowed down a lot. Um, yeah, it sounded like they hoped this would be our work. Yeah, so <laughs> thanks, sure, yeah. whatever you wanted to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I think the the condition the building commissioner was really you know of the interpretation that the the way they presented it and the condition on the site plan review was that the commission would review information, but not necessarily be doing the design, right, or paying for it. So right. um, 
I thought that was clarified through the building commissioner with Archipelago. Um, yeah, I can do another follow up with that. And Jane, send me, send me what you have. You know, David Fichter was going to come up right with another, the art, you know, the muralist was going to have, um, he had, uh, I thought he'd emailed me, um, we had asked him to do a little bit more research on what he thought would be a good sign, um, mm -hmm. interpretive sign. Right. Yeah, all right. Okay. Can I add an F to the general updates? Sorry? Can I add F to the updates here? Yes, right. item. Then I want to add G as well. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, can I ask about the sheep? Because I saw in the minutes that you found somebody. I did. I did, and he's very willing. That's his business. He lives in northern Franklin, just actually in, in southern Vermont, just over the line. But he went to the Vogue School in Franklin County. And he's very interested, and I told him we would get back to him when spring came, because he wanted to see where the sheep would graze, and he wanted to see what was growing there. And um, and so I think that's kind, kind of on hold a little bit for for one thing, growth hasn't really happened so that he would be able to engage. Um, but but um, whenever you give me the go ahead, I'll get in touch with him again and Nate and I can meet him at the cemetery and have him take a look. Um, he just sounded very eager and interested and he was he came recommended to me by the chair of the Greenfield Historical Commission who teaches at the Vogue School. Um. So you know, he wasn't just a random find. I was working on talking to people who I thought could make a good recommendation. Um, so Dylan Saldano, I think is his name. But um, I, I'm thinking it's just a little early to do that. And then we've got... We well, would have no to site have visits in town right now either, right? Right, right. And, and he would have to give us a bid, but then there's the whole issue of whether the town would agree that we should do that. Mm. You know, so, uh, I, 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 Nate, you have to guide us in terms of the process. Yeah, let me, I'll send an email around to staff. I think, you know, um, we talked about this a while ago, and, you know, I think um, Alan Snow, he's the division director of Trees and Grounds and Cemeteries for uh, Public Works. You know, Alan, I think, had, you know, has spoken favorably about this. Mm -hmm. It you know, then comes down to logistics and other things that may be outside of his his purview as well, but I'll, I'll send an email to Alan and just ask what he thinks and he can be a part of the conversation, Pat. So I think, you know, if we're going to schedule a site visitor email, I'll call him the sheep guy again, you know, we can loop Alan in and just, you know, I think Alan. That, would, that would be good to have his, his input and yeah. then, um, you know, to decide when would be a good time to arrange for Dylan to come. And if the town isn't wanting site meetings right now, then we have to honor that. Yeah. But um, Maybe in May. Yeah, I mean, outside May or sites, June. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, and it can also be Alan. You know, Alan may may feel comfortable if it's outside and we keep our distance. So I'll I'll email Alan and just see what if he how he responds. Okay, that uh, would be did, good. Did the guys say anything about how many times during a growing season they would have to do it? Is it just once, or would they have to come twice? He wanted to. He wanted to take a look at it. Okay. And I think, I think it might, I don't know, but I should think it might be more than once, but I don't know. He, it's his business and he has, he has, he, I, I'm, I'm not recalling the name of the, the fence, but he's got portable fences mm -hmm. that he can set up to, to contain right. the sheep. And sick. what I didn't ask him is if someone needed to be there supervising 24 seven or if they're good at night. And then we need to figure out whether they're safe. You know, it's a public place. Good point. Yeah. You know, the sheep are safe. Yeah. Um, so they're not big enough that over the course of a day, they might be able to do it all. It's not a big space. No, and, he, and you know, once he sees it, he would be better able to tell us. Right. Um, to the, the, what extent in time that they would need. Could, but someone make a, could someone make a recording, like just take some, you know, footage and send it to him? So, because you could probably, I'm not, I'm not necessarily, 
um, volunteering myself, but you could probably walk that area with a phone um, and then send it to him. And at least you'd get a sense of the area and how hilly it is and how intricate some of those falling or fallen stones are in relation to some of the... Well, I think that, the, the, as I understand it, sheep are more docile than goats. And mm -hmm. so we abandon the idea of goats because they climb, they jump, they, you know, they could be destructive to the, to the headstones. But sheep are less so. So I, I, I don't. I, I need to know exactly where the area is myself. I have to tell you, to be honest with you, um, I just know it from conversation. But I haven't walked it either. So um, the idea of filming it, Hetty, is a good one. But I think at some point Dylan is going to have to come and take a look at it and see yeah. whether he feels that he can manage his sheep there. But I think it's a great idea. I think it goes back to the history historic um, bequest, if that's what it was. And, um, you know, it, it's important to do these things. So, um, Nate, guide me, talk to Alan and see what he says. Sure. And then if there's a possibility for us to take a look at it, and we want to invite Dylan sooner than later, then, you know, I, I'm happy to continue to be the liaison with him on this, this idea. Great, um, yeah, I'll Nate. follow Alan. It's pretty great. It's great news. I'm so excited. Yeah. I can't yeah. wait to see these sheep in <laughs> West. I think it's just. I think it's, it's going to be. I think it's going to be a very, a very, very sweet occasion if it comes about. I, I'm really. Well, it has the potential for that, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Wonderful. Okay, item G. Okay, so. Item G, I just wanted to give an update on the Jones Library Project and where it last stood with the CPA Commission. Um, we had met and we, we had voted to recommend the million dollars, bonded over 10 years. And at the last meeting that I was at, there was discussion whether or not this particular project was allowable. And there was basically no agreement. And I just wrote some notes up from memory. I was trying to get my head wrapped around it again. The CPA, the coalition, Stuart Saginaw, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, initially said it was clearly not allowable, but that was really um, before we focused the project around specifically systems for special collections. The town attorney said it was allowable. Um, oh, pardon me, that's my, um, one of the commission members, I, I wanna say she spoke to the, Nate, you probably know this better than me, the Department of Revenue, I think has the final say and guidance around CPA. Um, so she had um, gotten some guidance being, I guess the technical term of, that's supplied to communities and to determine what's allowable. And my read, all of it was that it, it wasn't really clear. It seemed like the CPA commission was heading towards seeing it not as not allowable. And I wrote a long email to Nate Buddington arguing why I thought it was. And they were there was going to be a phone call and uh, between the town manager and um, I can't remember who members of the commission in any event, that's all the CPA Commission has been on pause with the um, COVID circumstances. So um, I don't know when it will get picked up again, but um, I anticipate it will be soon. So if I don't, I mean, I could certainly circulate the email that I wrote to Nate um, if people are interested in my line of thinking around it. It seemed like it was the, the commission was all of a sudden steering away from seeing it as something that they could approve. And I saw it as much more of a gray area. So what are you asking a, for my argument was that it wasn't a gray area, but are you asking uh, oh I just wanted the commission I wanted the, the, go ahead. What's that? I just wanted the the commission to be up updated on where things stood. Okay, it's not that you want us to push the pack a little bit. Well, I think, you know, um, uh, 
Oh, go ahead. No, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, so the CPA, CPA coalition wasn't really um, clear, but they, they, you know, they, I think they really thought it wasn't eligible. The town attorney said it was, and the CPA committee really um, didn't know how to, you know, kind of resolve the differing opinions. And the Department of Revenue, right. Uh, DOR, right, they, as you know, because CPA is financial, the Department of Revenue from the state usually issues guidance on some what's eligible. And it sounds like that wasn't as helpful either. So I think the CPA committee really is still in the discussion of whether or not it's an eligible activity to be funded with CPA funds. And so, you know, not that it was on the agenda. And I think, Robin, I'm not sure you were asking, but it could be that the commission decides to um, that it is eligible and we'd write a letter to the CPA committee or just something quick or it's not. I, I, I think that there, I think the members were really struggling to determine if it was an eligible expense. And so, you know, some of it is that it's right, a, right. you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an amount, it's a $1 million and really it's meant for um, things for special collections. But within that, the CPA coalition, you know, there's some question about, you know, just building, special collections may not be eligible, but if it's equipment or things that are needed to actually preserve artifacts, then it could be. But I, I don't think that kind of those details were ever worked out. And um, I think the CPA committee- Yeah, and that was, yeah. right, that was where, I mean, where I had left it was that after that meeting, I took my own look at everything because the Diane, Diana Stein's information from the Department of Revenue just came right at that meeting. I hadn't had a chance to look at it. So I wrote to him about my feelings about why it was allowable. And I just wanted to loop the commission back in to make sure that I'm, you know, making the right arguments and that we're, I guess, you know, an agreement or I don't know. I mean, it's all, it's all new. It's a new experience for me. So Nate, you're probably the better one to provide guidance on where to go from here. Um, so yeah, Rob, I mean, I, I guess it's up to the commission what the commission would want to do. I'm not really sure. Um, you know, the CPA committee, I think, will try to meet in the next okay. few weeks um, to pick this up. Mm -hmm. I know they're also, you know, with the COVID crisis, there's also some discussion about reprioritizing right, FY21 right. funding, like would it go to whether it's rental emergency funding or things. So um you know I, yeah but if we're looking at just this project it's up and i guess really i'm not i'm not sure where the commission if the commission would want to write a letter thinking that it is eligible i mean it's you know do we want to nudge the cpa committee at all that's a, a good question so right. Robin, um it from from what i've seen it sounds it, it it looks and sounds to me like uh the cpa committee is wrestling with terms like what what does preservation really mean and how far does it extend um yeah know. i think that there isn't really um a strong understanding between the dif differences around the fact that we're not dealing with the building that the historic preservation is the artifacts that you know how how that gets interpreted in relation to the guidance from the department of revenue um, in terms of what's allowable. There was, it, it was getting, I think, muddier than it needed to be. So I, I could share, I don't know, I can't remember if I CC'd you on that email, Jane, but I could it, share that with you. Yeah, um, it, we could have a conversation there. Yeah, I think you did. And I think um, it, it sounds, I, I guess, I don't know if this is an accurate reading, but from what I understand of the way the discussion at CPAC has gone and and information you've tried to provide to them, there's not a there's not a full understanding of what uh, what constitutes um, a qualified preservation project. You know how how far does preservation <coughs> go, and um, does it apply to to buildings or landscapes or artifacts, and um, is it something you do that's tangible or is it something that you do for an environment um it, it just seems to me that there was a lack sort of lack of clarity around that is that 
Am I? Is that yeah, right? and I think the, the I think the lack of clarity seemed to be coming from the fact that there was building going on, uh -huh. and so you could clearly point to an HVAC system being something that's been previously approved on a whole bunch of um, CPAC funding in different communities, but the fact that it was going into what might be a new building seemed to be what people were getting stuck on. Okay. Um, so, I, I mean, I think, it, I think it might be helpful to have a letter from the, the um, commission that outlines why we think it's eligible. Okay, yeah. And, and do you think? Because it's, I'm, I'm sort of the only one there who's able to argue for that yeah. particular position. Yeah. Um, and how do you think, so how should that be focused? Do you think it should be focused on um, talking about special collections as historic materials? And and try to try try to push away the the new building piece of it as far as possible. Would that help? Um, yeah. When I wrote to Nate, I tried to go through the. And I don't have that email in front of me, but I think I tried to kind of make the case piece by piece. Yeah. Um, you know, the first part being we're talking about artifacts, we're not talking about a building. The second part, um, if you are providing a system to preserve the artifacts, does it make a difference whether you're doing it in the old building or in a new portion of a building? I think there might have been one more kind of sticking point. So um, I can resend that to you and, and you could look at it and see what if you had questions for me about what specifically, if I wasn't clear about anything, but okay. it's like they, it's, it's, you kind of, you have to walk people through it because of the building project. That's what I would say, that that's what's confusing everyone. It's that you okay. can't yeah. use it for a capital project, but we're not really using it for a capital project, but that's hard for people to understand. Yeah, okay. I wonder, so I wonder if it would be helpful if, the commission sent a letter that, you know, doesn't really deviate much from from what you have said, but sort of tries to tries to reinforce it. So just so that they see yeah, that yeah. the voices that are saying the same thing. Right. I mean, I think my my concern with my opinion is just I don't have, you know, I don't have formal um, formal expertise. Jane, or the commission could vote to allow you to write a letter, um, you know, if that's the route we want to go. It, it wasn't an agenda item. Um, we, could, we could try to pick it up. Um, you know, we are meeting on the 7th as a public, continued public hearing. We could make this, a, 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 you know, if we wanted to have a few items afterward. Um, okay. You know, I just want to make sure that we're comfortable you know, I don't know if we have enough information to discuss it tonight, but would the commission want Jane to make, write a letter or would you want to pick it up again um, on the 7th? Well, I would think we should do it off of an agenda where it, it's shown in a public meeting rather than sort of doing it on the back side of this. But I would think that Robin's done so much, it might be easier for poor Jane who has to always draft these letters <laughs> to like, that do nice. <laughs> take what Robin's done and pull something out of that rather, you know, simply not, not to get too complicated because we're not really sure where this is heading and it isn't really our purview. It's just a, a nod to CPAC, right? So I don't want to dump a lot of work on Jane for something that may not really make well, it. No, that's, I mean, Jan, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> and that, that is kind of what I would, that is what I would sort of plan to do. I wouldn't, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I hoped that you that that what I wrote was sufficient, but that yeah, you, that you could take a look at it and formalize it, make yeah, sure and that I I'm not overstepping in one direction or another. Sure, sure, yeah, and I don't think we would want to um, introduce a lot of new uh, argue. You know, we wouldn't want to complicate it with a lot of new arguments of what you know of what you've got already set. Uh, Robin yeah, is yeah. the right argument then. We just need to we just need to endorse it and support it with maybe 
I could change a word here or there, or maybe I could change uh -huh. like five words. Or <laughs> <laughs> but I so I agree that should it should I? be on on the agenda for the seventh meeting. I I think it's important to have it be a yeah. public agenda item. Yeah. Okay. So so between then and now, should I try to draft something, Jane, and send it to you and have it that be for review? Is that how we would go forward, or? Um, you can, or you could uh, you just forward the email to me, and I can okay. draft something from the email. Or, okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, that's true. Not knowing where this is headed with um, potential need for housing support. Yeah. Um, Okay, so I think we, we can see that there are now no members of the public present in the meeting, so we don't need public comment. Um, and then we can set, uh, do we, let's go ahead and set, what's today, the 22nd. So shall we go ahead and set another meeting date after the one on the 7th, which is a pub, mostly yeah. public hearing? Yeah, that would be good. Mm -hmm. It would be uh, uh, May 20th or something. Well, we would normally be scheduled for the um, 20th, exactly. Should we, tr should we try for May, when I say May 20th? Yeah, well, it's for May. And what, what time, 6 p.m. as usual, 5 p.m.? Um, is, there, is there any chance it would be just as good for people to do it on the Thursday, the 21st? That's okay with me. Yeah, I, I, I can do that. I can't make the 21st, but you should go ahead. No, yeah. we'll then do the 20th and I'll work it out. I, I just never know if they're going to need me on that day, but it's okay. We'll, okay. We'll, I'll just say I'm, I can't, and we'll see how that goes. <laughs> All right, so are we saying May 20 at 6 p.m.? Yes. Okay. All right. Wow. All right, so we, we need to make a motion to adjourn. Yes, we do. All right. I hereby make a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thanks, Thank everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Nate. Thank you. Thanks, Nate. Nice to meet you, Ben. Good afternoon and evening away from your Thank family, you, Nate. Well, they were here. <laughs> well, I know. <laughs> well, we saw that little cutie head stick up. <laughs> funny. Well, thank you all. All right, thanks everyone. Good night. Good night. Take care.